Chart update, 4th of July. It's over. We're seeing gaps in deaths data from mainstream countries. With no deaths to report, the agenda is going to have to find some other reason for you to be afraid. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. Here's the wall of shame. They still haven't got Sweden beyond number five in countries, number six including New York City, and time's running out. Gaps are appearing in death histories. People aren't dying anymore. You'll notice that hasn't slowed the agenda appreciably. Testing leading to lockdown, tyranny in Leicester, new forced testing powers in the UK, second wave, the fear continues. And somehow neither mainstream media nor the populace manage to notice that the hardest hit place in the world are the places where they like to rule your lives. Kind of sad. Italy, and at this point you know the drill, or watch one of our prior updates, will only highlight truly novel info. So same old, same old, high percent of daily mortality, 65% and 159% lag death rate, more people dying of COVID than had COVID, fraud indicator, but you knew that already. UK, running out of people to kill, 202% lag death rate, sideways at peak, one of the three power or fraud centres, and now testing is enough to get Leicester locked down. New York City, we finally integrated it into our standard charts, and what a doozy. 22 times Hubei in cases, 43 times in deaths, a 423% death rate on lagged 14. That's the percent of daily mortality. Sorry, percent of daily mortality, 292%. Overall mortality, 61%. Anyone who thinks this is the virus has either absorbed the media without the slightest critical thinking, or is mentally deficient. Is that the same thing? It's sad, total fraud, and no one notices. Round the world, Africa first and Algeria. Bit of a contrast down at the bottom, the mortality figures barely visible. That's what being an impoverished African nation gets you. Safety. After its excellent start, South Africa is continuing its near-perfect exponential climb, finally with a hint of curlover, to reach 1.2 Hubeian deaths. New York should be so lucky. Zambia, by contrast, has a grand total of 0.1 death days, doesn't even register versus Hubei, which means it's less than 0.05 times Hubei, and has all but invisible mortality. Poverty is a virtue when the agenda comes calling. The Americas and Barbados continues flatlined, one death day in four months. They do dodged the bullet or behaved well. Brazil and the Americas, Central and South, people got a bit picky that I presumably refer to Mexico in being South America. I should have said not Canada or USA. The not Canada or USA Americas seem to be the only countries having trouble with the virus that aren't supposed to be agenda countries. But someone posted a Brazilian politician forcing his way into a hospital with 5,000 cases or some such to find it empty. So what's really going on over there? More agenda? They've managed to reach six times Hubei in reported deaths, but overall mortality is 9.3%. So COVID has been a minor player in Brazilians dying these last three or four months. Canada, friend of the world's leading agenda power fraud center, and it certainly played its part at four times Hubei in deaths, but overall mortality, 6.3%. It really wasn't much, was it? When you're living under a totalitarian regime that owns your body, i.e. now, you might reflect on how easily you gave up on the illusion of freedom and democracy. Ecuador, messy data, five times Hubei reported, overall mortality, percent of standard expected deaths, 7.9%. In terms of world performance, it's poor, but did it de devastate the country? Hardly. 
Mexico continuing its gracious curl over at 4.8 times Hubei, very much in line with its South American cousins. Or will I get in trouble for that too? And the USA. Is it fair to call the entire USA fraud central, or should it just be New York? It is, after all, Gates and Fauci who are running the scam, not Trump. However, the US has managed 6.7 times, sorry, 7.6 times Hubei. It's in the number 7 slot as a nation, New York dominating the entire chart at number 1 and 354 times the Far East, whereas the US is only 60 times the Far East. Basically, to live in America is to be besieged by the agenda, but hey, at least you're not in New York. Unless you are. Europe and Austria, one of the more reasonable EU core nations, at only 1.5 times Hubei in deaths, 2.2% of overall mortality. And Austria is still 12 times the Far East, so it's hardly an angel. I'm told that people are tired and want to look to the future. Me too, but what future? A compliant servant accepting the fraud that's been imposed on you? Is that a future? I don't think so. Belgium, how nice. Fraud power centre agenda centre number two after New York City, 121% of daily mortality, 23% overall percent mortality, 85% death rate lag 14, and 16 times Hubei in deaths. Yes, they pushed it. Croatia demonstrating that you can be in Europe without being part of the agenda. 0.5 times Hubei, 0.9% overall mortality, percent of normal mortality. Would the US and New York love that? It is truly tragic that even the non-agenda players, Peter Hitch and Simon Dolan, seem to have a thing against maths and the mainstream media, of course, says not a word. Denmark, a somewhat loyal player at 2 times Hubei, but overall mortality at 2.9%, says this is a minor footnote in Denmark's history, if Denmark survives as a democracy. Finland, matching Hubei at 1.1 times, minuscule overall mortality at 1.7%. Did anybody in the West even bother to see what was happening outside their own countries? France, and as a major EU player, you'd expect them to have a significant role, and so it is. 8.5 times Hubei in deaths, 121% of daily mortality, 80% lag 14 death rate, but still only 10.4% overall mortality. As ever, even the countries that have tried their hardest to make this a crisis have struggled to make it more than a minor footnote in their nation's deaths. Germany, and while you'd expect it to be one of the worst, is only ranked 24th in nations. It seems to have enough respect for its people to limit the damage. It is in fact one of the tidiest and most plausible of all the charts, with a proper 14-day separation between peak cases and peak deaths, so the lag 14 test doesn't phase it. Overall, Covid has been just 2.9% of Germany's mortality since the first Covid death, so a tiny fraction of virtual non-issue. I wonder if the German media played it that way. Greece, no friend of Brussels, and it shows. And near Far Eastern levels, 0.3 Hubei, 0.5% of overall mortality. Hungary matching Hubei at 1.2 times deaths and 1.7% overall mortality. Again, a non-issue. Also notice how the red dotted line is becoming gappy, sporadic. Deaths are petering out, not going to be news for much longer unless they find another angle, testing or second wave. Iceland at 0.5 times Hubei in deaths, 0.8% overall mortality and no daily dotted deaths line to speak of, it's been so long over. Ireland loyal to the EU under Varadkar, I wonder how the Irish people feel about that. 6.7 times Hubei, a true player in the agenda. Their masters will be pleased. Malta and barely touched again at 0.3 times Hubei. Seems you can be European without playing the agenda's game. Shame we didn't manage that. Netherlands again adjacent to Belgium, like Ireland, an obedient player at 6.7 times Hubei in deaths. 
75% lag 14 death rate, but they still only managed 9.3% overall mortality. Norway and a good result for Europe, still not at Greece Malta levels, but only 0.9 times Hubei and 1.3% overall mortality. Shouldn't have been more than a footnote in their history. Poland, 0.8 times Hubei, 1.1% overall mortality, not even a footnote. I wonder how they played it. It is interesting to reflect that without Ferguson's scare piece, this would never have been any more than a flu outbreak with a slightly more nasty virus. Portugal, and disappointing to see it somewhat loyal, 3.1 times Hubei deaths, but still 4.6% overall mortality. Not exactly an existential crisis. Russia, and a good result for Europe at 1.4 times Hubei. Over peak, finally, pretty much, it seems. Overall mortality, 2.3%, a tiny issue in their life. Spain, and they really racked up a big win for the agenda at 11.6 times Hubei in deaths, though a surprisingly modest 14% overall percentage of normal mortality. Kind of tough to get this to be a threat, huh? Death rate lagged, 14 days, 532%. Yep, you'd die of COVID without even having COVID in Spain. That's our key fraud indicator and it ties in with their high daily mortality, 77%, and overall 11.6 times Hubei. Sweden, and finally, even Sweden's deaths are starting to look spotty, dotted red. Better hurry, right now they're only ranked number five in nations. Even with the fraudulent curves, peak what peak. They're still not the worst. Bear in mind, Sweden, as a no-lockdown country, is the only country entitled to a normal virus, normal distribution, and yet it is the least normal of all the charts. We'll be doing a special on that, I suspect. Switzerland, as you'd expect, alongside Germany and Austria, a very tidy chart. Still 3.7 times Hubei, so a player in the agenda it seems, but overall mortality 5.1%, so hardly a threat to the cantons. Departing Europe, Turkey are last, and 1.2 times Hubei, so a good standard result. Overall mortality, percent of normal deaths since first Covid death, 1.8%, a tiny little issue. Good. Finally, the cool balm of the Far East, and 0.1 times Hubei, a bit of a contrast to 44 times Hubei in New York. And yet nobody noticed, and 0.1% of overall mortality. What's sad is that apparently they're still managing to play the agenda in Australia and New Zealand, even though they have levels of non-infection, non-death, that we can only dream of. China, which is really Hubei, the only province significantly hit, and a pity about that pesky deaths correction data point, but not going to fuss over it. Indonesia, and while it's still climbing, it's doing so at such a slow rate that the overall mortality is at 0.3% of normal mortality. Japan, and it's like watching a contagion in slow motion, may have to reflect on this as a potentially genuine flattening the curve, unlike our fraudulent versions, 0.2% overall mortality. Korea, the country that was over before Ferguson even published, and it looks like it's been doing some testing recently, but look at that overall mortality, 0.1%, a thousandth of normal deaths. Malaysia, again a long drawn out non-event. What would happen if people in the US and their politicians and their media were confronted with this? Cognitive dissonance, rejection, withdrawal? New Zealand and deaths evaporated a long time ago. It is horrifying to hear that somehow politicians are still managing to use it against the people over there. Philippines and 0.2 times Hubei, a very long, long drawn out non-event with 0.3% overall mortality and the western populace had no idea because nobody chose to tell them. Singapore, a bit of a contrast with that other city-state New York, 0.1 times Hubei, and so few deaths and so long over there, just a couple of dots where a daily death line should be. 
Thailand, another land of evaporated deaths and invisible, literally 0% overall mortality. That means it's less than 0.05%, less than one two thousandth of normal mortality. That doesn't mean they're not using it politically, but I think that's the global tragedy. It's been the perfect godsend for wannabe dictators, ours more than anyone. And Vietnam, the country that had a COVID death but cancelled it. I love saying that and it's absolutely true. One death, one day, next day, gone. India and the Near East, Middle East, whatever, a long drawn out climb, 0.3 times Hubeian deaths, overall mortality 0.4%. Gentle and dignified curl over, not going to be too worried with this one. Iran and a great first contagion, somewhat let down by second outbreak. Please, no second wave. Do we see a 195th wave for the flu? Fine, Covid exists, we get that. It may break out again, no shit. What matters is whether the fraud breaks out again. But wait, second wave designed to make you afraid. So yes, there it is. Second wave of the fear and fraud. Iraq and somewhat likewise had it sorted, but looks like another outbreak and strongly curled over in deaths. Overall mortality even at 1.9%. Really not going to lose sleep over that. Israel, massive spike in testing it seems, or a second outbreak. Got some deaths there as well. 0.7 times Hubei, so a good result. Intrigued by this Middle East resurgence. Overall mortality, 1.1%. Uh huh. Pakistan and akin to India and Japan at all, a very long drawn out process for a minuscule overall event, 0.4 times Hubei, 0.7% overall mortality. UAE, 0.6 Hubei, nice result, 1% overall mortality, not an issue. It really is pretty much over, so I guess they're going to have to find some other way to scare you, testing, second wave, calling flu, coronavirus or vice versa. And I'm going to have to find something useful to do. Thanks for watching. It's been a fascinating journey. Now we get to adapt to living in a totalitarian state. Bye bye freedom, I guess. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60 year old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch. Andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.